Hey guys and welcome to unitycookie.com. My name is Alex Tilford and today what we are going to be taking a look at is using vertex colors with our 3D application to use in Unity. So we're going to start off in Blender, we'll then move over to Maya and then we'll finish in 3ds Max. Finally what we'll do is we'll take the model from one of these applications into Unity and I'll show you how to set it up. Let's go ahead and get started. So in Blender we have our robot. Now currently this here has no vertex colors, but the way we can paint them in is by selecting a model, going into solid mode, not that it will not work in textured mode unless you have set up a custom node based texture that uses vertex colors, that is for a different tutorial though, so we'll just work with solid for now. What you do is you can either press V to go into vertex color paint, or you can come down here and select vertex paint from your menu. Once you are in vertex paint, you can go ahead and just paint in colors using the brushes that you're accustomed to. These are the same brushes from texture painting. So we have things like blur, draw, mix, subtract, and add. Those are going to be the most common. What I tend to use is just draw. So by using a mid value, you see on my hue saturation value, I have my value set to 0.5, we can paint in just the color. So just the hue and saturation. And quite easily, just go ahead and paint in some colors. So with our colors painted, we can now go ahead and export this to Unity. But one final thing that I would like to point out is that every object has to have vertex colors. So the head here does not have a vertex color channel. A vertex color channel is created as soon as you go into vertex paint. So you must have a vertex color channel if you're going to use this with a vertex color channel, a vertex color shader. Otherwise Unity will give you an error saying that it is trying to access vertex colors but the mesh does not have them. So just make sure you have that there. Now the shader I work with works with a vertex overlay. So what this means is that we must have zero hue and saturation and 0.5 as a mid value to get the correct texture. If we have it as white, which is default, it will actually make it very bright. If we have black, it'll make it very dark. So we can go ahead, set this to a mid value, and from the paint panel down here, we have set vertex colors. And this here will just flood with that color. You can also come in and use the set dirty vertex colors to add an occlusion to your colors here. And this here will show up in Unity. So this occlusion is useful when you have a tileable texture, but you still want to bake occlusion to your mesh. Let's go ahead and do the same on our body here and you can see the result. So you can see how we get that much better level of occlusion and that there will carry over into our shader. So if we go ahead and we save this, we can go ahead and import this into Unity and we can see the results. Okay, so with our robot imported, I'm going to drag it into the scene. We can see it here. Now currently you will not be able to see how we can view our vertex colors. So you need to have a special shader. We've currently been talking about how to write shaders on Unity Cookie. We have the introduction to surface shaders and we also have the introduction to fragment shaders. So if I go ahead and we drag on this flat vertex shader, you can now see that we have these colors in Unity. These are just a flat color. If I go ahead and open up this shader, you can see it is a simple shader that just outputs a color. So while I'm here, I will just quickly cover how we get our vertex colors into our shaders. What we need to do, is we need to add in this line here to our vertex output struct, and this line here to our vertex input. So the way this works is we have our float 4, because this is a color, so it has four variables. You can also create a half or a fixed depending on how optimized you want your shader. We call it color but you can call it whatever you like. This is just a variable name. And then the colon lets us assign a semantic. And the semantic that we want is color which is all uppercase. In the vertex output we must have here a variable name and we'll also assign that to color. Now you don't have to assign it to color in the vertex output. You can assign this to something such as text called 6 but for convention we just use color because that's what it is this just means that we're going to be overwriting the color channel with whatever we assign to it in the vertex function in the vertex function all we're doing is writing to the variable vert color in the o struct which is vertex output up here we're writing to that so this is this one and we're taking the value from v dot color which is up here so you can see v input is vertex input struct and what the variable we want is color. And that is a semantic of color. 
Finally, in the fragment function, we just return the vertex color. Now, if you are doing this in a surface shader, such as we have here, I do have a shader which I will give to you guys. This is a personal shader I've created a while back. And this here is a vertex overlay shader. So it has a fancy little loop here, which goes by the vertex, uh, by the overlay blend mode. Slightly customized, but it works like the overlay blend. And it lets us blend our vertex colors over top of our texture. So for a surface shader, what we do is we go grab the vert colors. Now we use vert, lowercase, capital C, and then the rest of the word colors. We don't need to assign a special semantic because it is a surface shader. It will already grab that for us. And then we go ahead and assign o.vert colors. So this one here. So input is actually our output. I've named that incorrectly. It's grabbing from V. So remove that last bit there. In surface shaders, it's quite similar. What we have is we have our struct input. So our input is actually our output in the case of the shader here. And we are writing to the vert colors the v.color. So the app data full contains a variable called color. And we're just going to grab that and write that to vert colors, which we can then use within our surface shader. So if you're unsure about all of this, don't worry. We have been covering this on Unity Cookie, and you're welcome to check out the surface shader tutorial or the fragment shader tutorial, depending on which type of shader you're wanting to create. Okay, so that is how we deal with it here. If I just show you a different material, we can come in and grab one of those. Okay, so here we have our shader. So we can see that we have our colors blended over top of our shader, over top of our materials, and that is working just fine. So you can see the uses for this straight away. You can also use vertex colors to blend between different textures, blend between other variables, adjust shininess, adjust anything you like. For now, we're just blending them over. If you'd like to learn more about how we can use vertex colors to control our shaders, by all means, leave us a comment and I'll do my best to help you out. Okay, so now that we've covered doing this in Blender and how, they, how the shaders work in Unity, what I'm going to do is jump over into Maya. So in Maya, I have the same model here. This is our robot. And what I'm going to do is show you how we can paint our colors. Now, I'm, I'm going to point out that I'm in high quality rendering mode. You can do this in default quality and high quality. This will not, by default, work with Viewport 2.0. Now, if you have a special shader, you can do this in Viewport 2.0, but it isn't required. If you would like such a shader, I do have one available. Um, it's not currently online, but I can provide that if there is interest. So with that set, what we need to do is go into the Color Paint tool. So this is in the Polygons menu, under Color, Paint Vertex Color tool. And if we click on the little option box, it will bring up our paint settings. So these are the paint settings that are exactly the same for every single tool in my or every paint tool in my so we can go ahead and set a color say such as red and we can straight away come in and start painting you'll notice my will start to lag while you are painting but don't worry it is just the way that it works I believe that uh, this is not the most optimized part of my okay so with that set what you need to do now is you need to select the other object and you also need to go ahead and go to color and paint vertex color tool and this will just create a vertex color channel so that unity can read it otherwise it won't have one available now you can also come in and do play around with settings do whatever you like i'm not going to bother showing you all the paint settings i'll leave that up to you to actually go ahead and mess around with these and see what you like the one that you might be interested in is Flood, which will flood a mesh with a color, such as what we have here. And that is great. So I won't go ahead and show you how to export. I'm going to assume, for the most part, that you guys know how to export from my into Unity. If you guys would like to see how that works, then by all means, let us know. Now I'm going to jump over into 3ds Max. So I'm using 3ds Max 2013. This is a student version. And to create a vertex color on an object is actually very sim simple. What we do is we go into our modifier list and we go to create a modifier. Now the modifier we would like to create is called Vertex Paint. So once you select that, you'll get a toolbox here. You can just go ahead and select the color and paint it on. Now you might find that the brush size is way too big. So I'm just going to take that right down to something like 0.6. And you've got to make sure that you check this paint option and you'll see that there. So you can see even 0.6 is quite a lot, 0.14 here, and we can now go in and start painting. So if we click this vertex color display, 
we can actually see the colours. You need to make sure you have that checked, otherwise you won't be able to see it correctly. So I click this little paint all button and it flooded it with red. So we can now go and change this to something like a purple and paint over the top. If you change your opacity, you'll see how that works. So you can actually paint lower opacities. So all the tools work exactly the same way and they're all quite nice to work with. So once you're done, exit the vertex paint tool and you can select another object. Make sure you go ahead and add in the same modifier, the vertex paint. And if you don't want to paint anything on, you don't have to. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and just paint. And you'll have to select the paint option there to be able to see it. So I'm working with quite a low opacity at the moment. If I take this up, we can see that a little stronger. Okay, so that is basically it. Once again, if you need help exporting from 3 d Max to Unity, by all means let us know and we might be able to do a quick tip on exporting from various software. Now if you are a Moto or Cinema 4D user, I will find some tutorials online and link to those. Unfortunately I do not have a current copy of either of those software, but I do know of some tutorials that will be able to help you. So back in Unity you can see here is our model. Now the shaders I have here, I will make sure that I include all of these. So the one we'll have is we'll have this vertex overlay, which works with a, a texture map and a normal map. We have a Unity Cookie flat vertex. This one here is used for previewing colors. It is just a flat color, there is no shading applied. If we go down into the normal mapped vertex color blend, what this one does is it will blend over two different textures based on the red color channel. So if I went in and I put in a different texture here, so now I have a wood texture here, it will be blending based on a channel. So you can see down on the feet, the feet were white, so they aren't actually affected by this texture. They are using the robot texture. And that's what that one there does. So it's just here to give you an example of how to blend with textures. The other one we have is we have a vertex colors. And this one here just shows shading along with it. So this one here is useful for things like geometric landscapes painted with vertex colors. So that brings us to a conclusion of this short tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any further questions about how Vertex Colors works, by all means, leave a comment and I'll do my best to help you out. So that's all for today. My name is Alex Telford and you are on unitycookie.com.